So this is just going to be a quick video showing some of my farming setups. This one here is in the post-Plantera dungeon, where there are three different um, background tiles. Uh, you can see two of them on the screen here, and the third is somewhere nearby. You have to pay attention to that because um, certain enemies only spawn with certain background tiles, and you ideally want to get all of them that can spawn. And when the enemies spawn, they then make their way up these little staircases I've built into the lava. Each of the lava pits, you can see um, on its left and right edge, has sort of a, a little overhang to it. And the reason is because the monsters, when they're in the lava, will jump. And if you let them jump their full height, then it takes a lot longer for them to die. So the overhangs make sure that their jumps are only a small height. Um, somewhat dangerous are the casters, the Inferno casters, I think maybe they're called, that just spawned. Um, you didn't really see what they did. Maybe another one will. Um, also dangerous, it, yeah, see there you can see how it attacks and it leaves behind these uh, fireball, these persistent fireball things that do a lot of damage. Um, his attacks go through walls, so you have to Kill them quickly if you can. The honey is there in parts so that I can extinguish that fire. There's also the paladin who's right now in the lava. And he has an attack that will also go through walls, but he'll only um, use that attack if he has line of sight. So if you kind of keep him, keep him in a place where he doesn't think he can see you, then he won't attack. But you still want to kill him quickly because while you're moving around avoiding the other attacks, he may get line of sight. In this setup, I've got the heart lamp, which increases health regen, and the campfire, which also increases health regen. Um, I didn't bring a uh, sunflower, but probably should have. And then I've got the honey, which also does health regen in addition to extinguishing the flames. And then that water candle, which increases the monster spawns. This is another setup I have that is specifically for uh, farming dark mummies. And this is also how I got that crimson key. Um, although I think I did that when this, uh, this whole area was actually still crimson. I've since cleaned it out. Um, basic idea is you've got, again, these pits uh, with lava. And on either side, I've got a small amount of the crimson sand. And the monsters will spawn depending on the kind of block that is that the ground is made of, essentially. So that's why even though this area is sort of the normal desert biome, I'm getting the crimson monsters to spawn, including the dark mummies. And predictably, they make their way toward the lava pits, jump in, and then eventually die. And the last thing I'm going to show is how I farmed for the wyverns, which are the dragon creatures that spawn in the sky. Uh, they drop the souls of flight, which are used to make wings. And in fact, I, I recorded this just uh, after getting into hard mode, um, so I didn't even have wings yet. I just got the, the rocket boots. So up in the sky, the dragon spawns, and uh, I've got a water candle there to increase the spawn rate. And although I screwed up there, it's pretty easy to dodge these attacks. You just have to time this jump properly, and then the wyvern goes over. And I'm using the unholy arrows to do damage because those do piercing. So as long as it's aimed properly, each arrow does an enormous amount of damage to the wyvern. So you basically just hang out here, waiting for them to spawn, and shoot them in that way. Yeah, so that's my farming setup. In the next episode, I'll actually fight the golem.